the California coast collapse, we can see it accelerating. We can see the new shifts by what we're about to look at right now. Bay Area, this is where all the earthquakes was just recently striking. We got video footage now coming out where we can see the coastal land shifting off the cliffs. As this is happening in California, there is a mega quake project for the Cascadia subduction zone as well at play. We're going to show you more of these land cracks here that's opening up. But we want to move into Portland State researchers hope project will reduce mega quake uh, damage. They just did this September 2025 and this is the 25th again. So the subduction zone obviously spreads a little far. If and when Cascadia subduction zone earthquake hits, the Portland region's soil liquefaction could dramatically worsen the damage, leading to buildings to tilt, rolls to buckle, utility lines to rupture. So we're going to go into this for you right now. What they did was they used this giant machine. They call it T-Rex. They simulated their own earthquake. Yes, as a matter of fact, they use this, it shook the ground. We're going to show video clips of all this stuff we're talking about. Why are they doing this? Because they're saying we want to engineer the soil so that these rupture won't be as damaging. That's what they're trying to do here. So this is an experiment in a Cascadia subduction zone. As that's happening, seismologists just went out and warned about Hayward Fault. Because this is the one where it's slowly slipping and creeping and moving and shifting. And they're trying to say, well, the probability is low. And look, let's look at what's been happening along Hayward Fault. This is one of the most dangerous faults in America because you barely get any warning signs. It just slowly creeps and eventually it splits apart. You can see where all the recent seismic activity has been through January all the way to September 2022, uh, September 22nd, 2025, excuse me. So that's been something we've been watching as well as all of you tuning in right now live. But let's look at this coastal land shift here in just a second. Meanwhile, though, they say, hey, it's OK. The big one is not happening yet, but they start right away this week. California could detect massive earthquakes with Internet cables. So they start going on the ground and installing these cables back to back earthquakes that rattle Bay Area. And they're saying they need to put these things somewhere like around the ground areas. So I just find that highly suspect here. Uh, let's look at the land shifts that is happening uh, in California before we get to the experiment. So we can look here on camera. This is a retired hydro hydrogeologist and he's on the California coastline. Here's the acceleration. You can see the cracking, the breaking, uh, the new openings here. This area has been slowly uh, starting to have a situation that's happening. You can see this crack right here and it's coming off on the cliffs. You can see these opening ruptures. The residents over here are well aware of this uh, and, and they will have to relocate. So you can see how the ground has shifted and moved. The coastal areas are going to start shifting apart slowly on this Cascadia subduction zone. And again, as we see all this start to happen, all the land shifts and everything else, your eyes is going to be the best thing you got. And this is San Mateo County where this is currently being experienced at. And there's other areas where this has happened as well. Now, we're going to get you to the experiment that we all need to be watching because they're trying to do this to the soil. So I'm going to pull you into this. They just talked about it recently. PSU tests effectiveness of groundbreaking soil treatment with earthquake simulation. So let's hear what they have to say about this experiment that they're doing along the Cascadia subduction zone to try to stop devastation from being so bad. OK, so try to show you they end up kicking me out of the stream there. So what we're going to do is we're going to just pull up some images over here. And here's what it looks like right here. So you can see this photo says enhanced field testing. So give me a moment here they've been kicking me out a couple times enhanced field testing we could read some of the situation uh we're going to show some of the photos here because the video for some reason is having some situations go on so they go out there and they start putting these microbes in the soil we'll tell you about it straight up they put some microbes in the soil along the cascadia subduction zone and while i'm here with you in live time i'm actually pulling all this up so stay with me 
these microbes are going to supposedly stop the ground from liquefying. And we're going to show you the zones that is uh, going to liquefy here in just a second. So they're putting, I'm going to show you all these zones. Look at this on screen right here. It's sinking. So if you look on the left hand side, these are the zones along Oregon. This zone goes all the way up to Washington. If you look along this entire map, these are your watch zones and the areas that you need to look out for. This is where the experiment is currently uh, taking place right now. Uh, going into a little bit uh, deeper, this T-Rex machine they use to shake the ground. So they're using this soil treatment as they right here. We'll go into it just to show you another photo really quick as the video for some reason won't let us show it right now. They go out there and then first they rattle the ground. We don't know what type of simulation of earthquake they did, but I'm going to tell you some intergovernmental stuff that's happening as well. That really is pretty much along the Cascadia subduction zone. And it's like, why do you need to bring in uh, multinational governments in order for us to have this situation happen here? Because it was just $10 million put in. So I'm going to show you right here. They put in $10 million for disaster funds and they don't just prepare for we're talking about just uh, earthquakes they prepare for more than earthquakes we're going to show you that so 10 million dollar investment core three facility a multi-agency training center planned for red hood red mind and look it says oregon intergovernmental council the core three project is designed to coordinate disaster relief across oregon with state senator anthony broadman rep emerson levy and rep jason croft so not just them, they're doing this like in multiple zones. So check it out. What do they say there on the website? They don't just prepare for earthquakes. They prepare for wildfires, pandemics, and floods. And if you read right there, it says Central Oregon, Pacific Northwest, and the state of Oregon are facing growing threats from natural disasters such as flooding, pandemics, as well as anticipated Cascadia subduction zone. So enhanced field testing is currently happening where these microbes that they're putting in the soil are supposed to stop the soil from sinking so much. This is exactly what they're saying in all the official language. Now, I want to let you see a little bit of this facility, though, that these intergovernmental agencies right here, Core 3, is getting all this funding from. Uh, so we can look right here and see that this is some of the facilities, some of the training facilities. Why is this important? Because if we look at some of the layout, we'll be able to see uh, what is actually going on, what's happening, uh, why do they use these specific areas. Uh, obviously, every area I notice where they're training at, they need to have an airport strip right next to it because just in case they need to evacuate, right? Let's show you the airport strip right here. So I'm pulling this up on screen. They kicked me out of the stream now. So you're in a lot of time watching all this. Subscribe. And so I'm trying to get you this right now. I'm pulling up literally while we're talking. So we got the cashy section over here. We got the rock outcropping, the parking expansion phase two. Uh, and the question is, are they going to have any facilities where they're housing people at? Because a lot of these disaster facilities that we're looking at now, 300 million funds. The government is asking for 300 million in funding. So do we find that suspect at all? Especially because these same people who are saying, well, we need more funding. We don't even see our roads being rebuilt. We don't even see our infrastructure rebuilt. We see the same stuff happening over and over and over again. Uh, I'm going to show you more about this facility here in just a second. Uh, let's pull up this. And, and speaking of everything right now, we had another more magnitude earthquakes hitting that same Bay Area where they say, oh, everything is fine, everybody. Of course, it's going to be aftershocks, though. We told you about that. As long as we don't see some fours or fives, uh, that's just low-level stress. Uh, the four follow-up, again, it was a 3.0 the other day. What I find more interesting, though, let's go into this next part, because like I said, we're live right now with you, and we're pulling all this stuff up. September is the month, obviously, of preparedness, where the sheriffs in Oregon were a Telling officials, get ready, prepare for self-sufficiency in September. Is it preparing this month? Uh, and they say, uh, preparing this reminder, prepare for the unexpected, the Lincoln County Sheriff Office says. Uh, and then when you go into the language a little bit more, uh, they do mention subduction zone telling you, hey, you need to be prepared for at least four weeks. So we're going to pull that up right now. So I'm just talking you like, well, I don't see the 
I don't see what you're talking about. You're just telling me that. There it is right there. For coastal residents, it is recommended to be four weeks Cascadia ready in preparation for Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. This means your household has enough food, water, medical supplies, sanitation supplies, and other life sustaining resources to meet your needs for at least four weeks. So that is what they are currently, we got a little buffering going on here, but that is currently what they are projecting right now. If you're live right now, give us a thumbs up uh, and let everybody know what's going on. And you've been getting all the maps, all the watch zones, everything else. If you've been here for the last couple of weeks, you already know that we have even more. So the Oregon Earthquake Project field test, I want to give you some more information on that because New York, when this uh, rupture opened up in the ground, the people were worried about gas lines. So this is what they say. They, your power lines, everything will be in the way. When liquefaction hit, it could dramatically worsen the damage leading to buildings to tilt and rupture, especially susceptible are sandy and silty soils like those by Willamette River where aging tanks store fuel, including gasoline, diesel, and biofuel. Intense shaking during an earthquake could cause those soils to behave more like liquid uh, than solid, leading to the tanks to crack and collapse, spill, and explode. So that's the other scenario you're facing. So the method is they're, you're using microbes to simulate the better option, the soil treatment, and they're not injecting concrete or nothing like that in there because that's what they said it was in the past they were injecting concrete to try to that's not going to work like why would you do that so in this case is psu's microbial induced desaturation method may prove the only one feasible researchers said and so again they're putting these it's just engineering the soil right now do you really think that's going to stop the whole cascadia situation to me is there something far more larger behind this scenario? I don't know at this point. I'm looking into that right now, but I'm going to pull up some other stuff that is um, really important because you know how Russia has been getting hit with all these earthquakes recently. I find it very interesting that they go and pull out their own Noah's Ark style like satellite object. Check this out. Maybe like Russia's Noah Ark satellite carrying 75 mice and 1,000 flies lands back on Earth. They launched this thing in like September 19. So there it is right there. And I'm going to show you inside of it. It says they came from outer space. Yeah, right. 75 mice, 1,000 flies, 1,500 flies, cell cultures, microorganisms, plant seeds. I don't know. So maybe Russia is like, you can't keep getting hit with all those earthquakes. So maybe they're like, well, you know, if we keep getting hit by all these earthquakes, we need to get prepared like Noah's Ark. We need to like try to make sure we can have a disaster plan to, to move. It says a trio of search helicopters. What do y'all think? A trio of helicopters carrying technical specialists touch down near the descent module to extract the living specimens as rapidly as possible. Sounds like some sci-fi movie. As a possible to start an initial examination. For example, on-site specialists were slated across to flies, slated to assess the flies, my bad, motor activity to detect any nervous system problems. It's that serious to the point where Russia, they got hit with a 7.7, 8. It's too many. I mean, I feel like they're about to go. Because I look back when they had earthquakes years ago and they actually didn't even tell the media it was happening. They pretend it didn't happen. So if a if a mega quake does hit Russia, we're going to have to watch that. And that history repeats itself. So if they did that back in history, the earthquake hit Russia in that subduction zone. Do we think they're really going to give us 100 percent certainty of what's going to happen there? Because they look at this from a military standard perspective. And if you look at military and geology, you start to notice there's a pattern there. The military studies geology in order to have warfare advantages. So they, they don't want to give away everything to the public because they feel that an enemy could also infiltrate them or use that moment to go into the most sensitive or devastated zones to then conquer certain areas of the land. Uh, so, again, this is something that you have to look into over time because this is how it affects everything. So this experiment, and I want to bring this up right here because I put this out just the other day. If you're live right now, 
And I know a lot of people probably won't even make it this far. But if you're here right now, then you're part of the few who have a real desire to know what's going on. But the military, uh, they just retreated recently. Watch now Pacific Volcano erupts U.S. military. All right. It's the third kick out of the day. All right. So here it is right here. Video ain't over with. Yes, people said good video. Ain't even over. They kicked me out. Um, watch now. Pacific volcano erupts. U.S. military retreats as West Coast prepare. And this is along the entire Ring of Fire area. We cover that. We'll have that video clip on the left hand side here. You know, check that out. We're going to be following this experiment, seeing what's happened over the next course of days and weeks. Got kicked out of this stream three times today. Share this out in mass. Something is happening here. We, we need this information to go a little further. Uh, but I got to get out of this stream because I can't keep getting kicked out over and over again. I appreciate all of you who are here. Get this message.